Honourable Minister, this project actually is conceived because of the perennial lack of uh, water supply in this area. Incidentally, we have a lot of rainfall in this axis all the way to Enugu State, down also to parts of uh, Cross River and uh, Kogi. But incidentally, the sub, uh, surface condition does not uh, give us the uh, advantage to drip boreholes. So most of the boreholes at our national level for water supply failed in this region. And we have a lot of overland flow. So what we decided to do is to make, at least catch the overland flow in form of dams to make a regional water supply scheme for the people around here. That was actually the reason why we chose this uh, um, dam because it can provide water for about three local governments in this area, Utupo, Ohimini, and Nado, probably in future parts of, uh, uh, of Oku local government. But the dam is about 2.5 kilometers long. If you look, it starts from the point there where there's a heap of sand, yes. and I will bring that sand from Makodi. So that's the best sand you can find in this area. And if you see, your uh, one of minister, we crossed the railway junction there. We made that railway crossover with uh, collaboration and permission from the railway. The railway. So we take sand, a railway, from Makodi to this point. And the sand is used for filter. It's the best sand we can find anywhere. So we stockpile them. So from that point, all the way along here, and then continuing down to this end, is the total length of the dam. It's 2.5 uh, kilometers long, and it's 30 meters high. And it's supposed to impound, at the end of this, it's supposed to impound water here, about 100 million cubic meters of water. And may extend all that way to 10 to 11 kilometers. This way, all this place will be filled with water. And that's the water that will be used for irrigation, fishery, hydropower generation. Now, at this point, we're already doing uh, the spillway, and then the hydropower is will be cited here. It's going to generate about 3.3 .3, uh, megawatts of electricity for the local environment. It might not be much, but it is the, the quantity that the capacity of the water we're going to stop and generate. So now we've gone far. Unfortunately, government is making efforts to pay us and they're uh, uh, sufficiently. Because uh, the certified amount of money is about 10 billion. Government has paid up to 7, 6 point something billion. Out of the 10 billion? Yes, that is certified. Yes, government is 6.8. Uh, 6.8. That's about 7. It is already. So actually, we are, we are very comfortable. The funds are still released. To, fortunately, at this time, this is when activities pick up because the rains are already going. During the flood in your uh, honorable minister, here it was flooded. As we are coming, you could see remnants of flood. In fact, it even broke some of our structures because it was a flood that we never experienced in the past 60 years, generally in Nigeria. So it affected this, uh, so it slowed down our work uh, for some time. But generally in the rainy season, we don't work too hard because the moving uh, uh, activities don't go on very well. But as it is now, we are poised to start work very seriously because the rains are going, the activities are going, we have enough sand from Makadi. We have materials also available, and we are preparing for a big take-up. This is an introduction I can give you. What is the total cost of this dam? Yeah, the total cost, as certified initially, is 17 billion. 17 billion, mm -hmm. with a completion period of about 36 months. We intend to finish this dam by 2014. 2014? Yes. So if... if uh, I think when, we speed when, up when activities. Was, when was this contract awarded? 2010. When? When in 2010? I think it was in March. March, 2000, March 2010. Yes. How many months have you spent now? Well, between March uh, 2010 and now, we spent uh, 20 something more than. Hmm? 2010 and 2012. Who is the arithmetic? Uh, no, it's not. 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 It's
not intended. Yeah, because if a budget does not release, if there's no budgetary provision for a year, it is 12 months. Gone. And the rains have also disturbed the, the progress of work. So if, normally we factor that, but if a budget is not made available, that's a year gone completely. Which year was there? Because of the ESCO, they awarded the contract. Yes. And uh, this dam has been one of our priority projects. I'm saying that the place of work does not seem to be commensurate. I don't know. But even the release is made. No, I don't, uh, I don't think so. Because at the time, there was no money released at all. There was a period we had uh, for 17 billion. If they release, 900 million, for instance. You know, it, it becomes difficult. And we mobilized. Actually, mo mo ma the main problem that slowed down, apart from lack of money, was finding the appropriate materials. Now, we had to find... We had to find materials from Makodi. We tried all the sounds around here. They didn't fit into the filter that we needed to require. So we had to go to Makodi. And then, we need permission from the railway, which we got from Lagos for us to even cross the railway here. So we then we constructed this uh, by a railway crossing. Then we had to even rehabilitate part of the railway here so that we could tip our sand. So these were all part of the construction uh, processes that were not envisaged in the original contract. We thought we could find sand because there's river here, but the sand we find there is not good as filter materials. So actually, it's construction uh, processes plus lack of uh, initial funding. Uh, 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 SEC, yes. Please, can you come and speak to us about what you are doing here? Good day, everyone. Uh, as you can see, this is the camera. Yes. Okay. Uh, no, the camera. Okay. Uh, as you can see, we have uh, different stages. As you can see, we have different uh, stages on constructing a dam. Uh, the cut of trench, which you cannot uh, see at the moment, it's beneath the dam itself. The dam itself cannot be constructed without cut of trench. Uh, due to the instability of the material that we found below the dam, we should have, uh, we needed to excavate almost 12 meters, 14 meters into the ground and start to backfill it up so there won't be any seepage beneath the dam and for the collapse of the dam. That was something that we did not expect and it took us almost uh, one uh, full dry season to do this uh, job. If you look now, almost all the sections of the dam are already above ground levels. You can see protections on the downstreams. You can see boulders strong protection of the upstreams, which the boulders are here uh, to prevent uh, the waves to smash uh, into the dam itself. The dam itself is from clay material. In the middle of the dam itself, we have a chimney, which we use it with the, the sand filters, with the sand filters that we have uh, from Akrudi. The purpose of the filter itself is that the water that do pass through the clay, and some water do pass, they reach the sand, penetrate down, and with easy release, they uh, discharge to the downstream uh, towering. Uh, all these ones are being done uh, with uh, very strict supervision by the ministry. Every step approvals uh, have been uh, given and upon those approvals we continue and uh, we continue to work uh, on the north part and uh, at the south part. We are now standing at the south part and uh, at the south part almost uh, we can say 80% of the earthworks have been completed. We are now constraining ourselves to the concrete works at the service spillway and about 200 meters we have the intake tower, the conduit and the power stations, which we are still uh, waiting so the final drawings to be given, and then we can start uh, to work on those ones uh, as well. In total quantities of uh, concrete, we are estimating that it will be almost 50,000 cubics on these two structures only. 50,000 cubics of concrete, of concrete. Mm -hmm. include iron and uh, special uh, elements uh, to be put inside the, the concrete itself to prevent uh, seepages and uh, so forth. Uh, the total uh, length, as the uh, director of dam said, was 2.5 kilometers, uh, with the power station that was added after uh, the contract was uh, admitted to SEC, according uh, to the order of the 
the president of uh, Nigeria, the Republic of Nigeria. And so everything goes uh, hand in hand. As we are proceeding, we are getting uh, more information due to the changes that uh, the project had, and the project had a lot of changes. From the initial design that was given to SEC to the design that we are working now, there were a few uh, versions. And now we are working uh, on the last version. And uh, all those versions and so forth were with uh, the consultant with uh, the Federal Ministry of uh, Water Resources hand by hand to prevent any uh, mishaps regarding uh, the collapse uh, of the tunnel. Just additional to that, uh, when I was telling you that we have uh, a clay core, that's this part of the tunnel is the clay. Now, normally a dam, if it's 30 meters from the ground, you go 10 meters minimum from below the ground before you come up because of seepages and all this. So we came about 10 or 11 meters below the ground to the ground level. Then uh, we come up to this level. That's what happens. But incidentally, one of the reasons we had uh, some of the delays is there's a point over there that while we are going down about 8 meters, we met a very complex uh, ground situation. Incidentally, we found that it was an old flood, just like what we're experiencing now. There was an old flood that existed there, and I packed materials together. And as we were excavating, we just met water gushing out. So we had to suspend, find the reason, and do a proper interpretation and arrangement to start. Because when that was done, it took us some time. But for the stability of the dam, that has to be done. It's a situation that is not very usual. An ancient uh, river course with flooding and all this, maybe a few thousand years old, but it existed. So we had to scrape that place and then do a new great design. But as it's going, well, I think we are very satisfied with the current rate of uh, work. Well, maybe I will conclude and then ask the media to... The difficulties we have always faced at the Federal Executive Council is that each time we give them uh, it's a swamp bag is for the country at the level of the ministry. Because these designs now lead to new costs and then new variations and we find that over time you will see that a lot of those dams we, we they hardly get completed you know at the time we, we want them uh, why won't we finish the designs or anticipate these things at the beginning honorable minister i can stand here and tell you that in dam construction it is virtually impossible to have the total design for the construction now dam is just not like for instance, highways, where the, the thickness of the soil in consideration is about 1.5 to 3 meters maximum. And it's, it, it responds to vehicular loading on the road. That is the bearing capacity of the material. That is it. 1 to 3 meters in dam construction, we even call it a spoil. That is the live level the soil will scrap off before we start our construction. I just, I just told you that if we have a dam 30 meters high from the ground, we go down at least 10 meters before we come up. So anything above 10 meters normally, in fact, 3 meters is, is like a, a spoil. So we scrap it up. Now, when you're going down into the ground, you can never be sure of the kind of materials you're going to need. I just give you an example of a buried old stream with flood and all this, which may not be reflected on the surface geotechnical investigation. Even if it's soft, it can give you a response that is clearly confusing. So it is not possible for us to have a completely total design, detailed before construction. And uh, Honorable Minister, it is not something we are saying today, tomorrow, day after and all that, it is going to be the situation. Until government decides to say, okay, you go, do thorough this thing and go down very deep. And, but even then, from point to point, you still have variations. So normally, uh, RATCs are always part of our design. And also, uh, uh, even government policies can also bring RATCs. If government decides today that the minimum wage is this, it affects the contractors. So the amount they are going to pay to workers will increase. If government decides <coughs> that, okay, we we'll remove space. Those are not the things we're talking about. No, but these are things. We're talking about the design. Yeah, about the design, yeah, the design I've explained. But these are also responsible for variation in prices. 
So the variation in prices? Most of the variations have been done with, uh, in, as far as we know, it's about this variation in designs. It's hardly those incidental costs of labor and so on have not been the major issues, but designs, well, you know. Design, uh, Honorable Minister, I've just told you. Tomorrow, if you give anybody a contract for a dam, a very serious dam, that thing will still come up because he's never sure of what he's going to meet under the ground. The earth is just so complex. So, whatever you meet, you must take into consideration in your design. You have to change. Now, I'll just give an example. I was here about a week ago. Now, if you see the concrete slab here, they started putting the concrete slab. They just hoping that it was going to be stable. After the rainfall and all this, the slabs were jointed, they were not continuous. After rainfall and small drying, we realized that the slabs were no more fitting. One was higher than the other because of the settlement. Because the material there is so plastic, so differential weighting was settling it. And we cannot put a huge structure on that when it's sliding. So we had to stop to look at it critically when it's dried up and take materials again and do some analysis and see whether we should change just putting a flat thing on it or maybe put something with spines on it. So it is, we can never, never be totally sure of our underground situation. That is one of the reasons. It might be different in dams because there is no other way we can do it, Honorable uh, Minister. And we say now they have gotten the final design now. And what? This job will be delivered. Yeah, the only design that we're waiting for is the additional hydropower, which we introduce after the contract. So we must locate it in such a way that it's not going to affect the dam body and any other spillway, any structure. Initially, we intended putting it somewhere on the other side, but for economic purpose, we try to put it together with our spillway very close to it, so that every other thing, the water coming, the height, and everything will be maximized. So most of these things What are, will be the total water volume? Uh, it's about 100 million. 100 million cubic meters of water. Well, I, believe, I believe it's going to be slightly more than that. Yes. Thank you very much. It's a very big project I'm seeing here. My name is Steven Alishonar by again, Beno Television. You said you... So you happened on an old river course. And you know the devastations caused by dams are as large as the dam themselves. We had it released recently. It was not it didn't break, just release and people were running here helter skelter. Please tell us. Because of this old river course you met, are there possibilities that something else will resurface? Because now that you punctured it open, things are happening somewhere else because it's not the only place. It must have been the, the, the whole length of the river. You are a professional, you know what I'm talking about. So if something else happened. Should we, maybe people in this community, should they be wary of this particular dam? Are there things in place to prevent such um, devastations? Uh, thank you. Well, uh, maybe I should just put it clearly. Uh, the old river struck, the old river, buried river I'm talking about, is as you're coming, you cross this river, the current river, you cross the river. That was, that river wasn't there. It was the other place. But when the river meanders this way and has flood, the likelihood is for it to abandon the coast and then create an elbow. Breaks through the elbow and creates a new path. That is a new path now. The old one is the one we met. You understand? So it has nothing to do now. It's an abandoned river course. Completely abandoned river course. What we were, we were scared of was when we saw the, raw, the soil and it was not competent enough, we said, why? So we decided to scrape it and then put competent rocks. That is it. Now, in terms of what will happen if there is a devastation. Now, a dam, normally, in construction of a dam, we have an environmental impact assessment. Then, a dam break analysis. That is, you assume your dam failed, then you break it. Then, when you break such a dam, by natural events sometimes, what happens downstream? We do that, then we see the flood movement, where it can extend to, the speed, the height, and who it, or what structures it can. So we map up those areas and make sure nobody resides there. We always have this. All our dams have it. Now, you wanted to make a, 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 
an example of the flooding ar arising from the release from Cameroon. Is it? Cameroonians did not do anything wrong. Because in management of your dam, you must release when it is absolutely necessary for you to release. If the dam is stressed up, you have to release water from it. Because as you say, dam break is more devastating than the release. So the water was rising extremely fast, unprecedented. In fact, that was the first time they had that kind of rise since the construction of that dam in the 80s. And they couldn't help it. And the rainfall they experienced that day was one in 80 years. So they had to release. And they sent message to us that they went to release. This dam within Nigeria, we will do the same thing if it is stressed. We will release water to make sure that there's no damage. So dam management is all about release of water, relieving the dam of stress, creating enough space for inflow in the rainy season, and also making sure that the river valley has life. Yes. My name is Gina Alpo, New Agency of Nigeria. Um, my question is, the issue is not always about starting projects like this, it's about completion. Because um, the, the purpose of this project is for people to use it. And already there are a lot of uncertainties surrounding this project. Are you likely to have a new date for completion or you stand by 2014, 2014 date? Are you likely to complete before the end of the, uh, the life of this administration? Well, I don't know the uncertainties you are talking about. The things we have experienced are things that are normal in dam construction. When you don't have materials, when you have suitable materials, you must make sure you provide them. But if we have spent about 24 months out of 36 and we are still giving you 2014, it means they have taken care of that. It's already above uh, 36 months. So we are taking care of that. We are trying to see how much work is left between now and then. That's why we're proposing the new day. How many jobs are you creating in the course of this construction? Yeah, that, and in particular, what categories of Nigerian professionals are they engaged? Well, I think uh, I don't need to talk to that number of uh, jobs they have right now. 450. 450 right at the now. moment. At the moment. Now that some, uh, most of them are laborers who have engineers too, a few engineers. And, uh, engineers? Because we told them five. To five. five. At least five. Yes. Five, okay. Now, the issue is this. We are proponents of such. Personally, I want uh, local involvement. But you must have the competent people to put in, this, in the, the project. It's not because the project is in your area, then you just look for somebody, the, the, the community will bring somebody this from the area, but we must know whether it's, it's able to do this. Up to now, we still need some of these engineers that are qualified to come and join, because that's the only way we can transfer uh, our... And, and one other thing, sir, let me let you know. We make sure that even if we have a foreign consultant, we put a Nigerian consultant to know the design, to know the supervision and everything. That is always what we do in that. We always make sure the Nigerian is there as a consultant. Yeah. Let me just clarify this. I wasn't asking for the uh, engagement of persons from a particular catchment area. Did you, for instance, consult with Kore to see if you could get qualified Nigerian engineers to be engaged in this particular project? Well, uh, it is not Kore that admits anybody for federal minister of water resources or even federal government. It is the civil service commission, and our engineers write to them. They apply. It's not the current that uh, uh, employs for the federal government. But we always give the federal government, I mean the civil service commission, our requirements. So right of recent, they sent about 18 geologists to dams. Now, I think about uh, 12 civil engineers and water engineers to my department alone, and I've engaged all of them. So what we do is put them to site. These are just uh, new, fresh people. Uh, you are the director of uh, the director of dams. Yes. Yes. Uh, how many dams are we constructing in the country, uh, particularly in the northern part of the country now? And uh, what are the exit points? Well, I don't have it off hand, but we have uh, a lot of dams ongoing. Now, uh, I 
I don't really have the number of it, but I can call a few for you. This is one. We have Kashimbila, which is going over there with the president last week. We, we went to Contagora. Incidentally, you couldn't get to the downtown. Yes, now, now. and I was going to ask you. Yes. You don't get there. We have Suma, we have uh, Sapje, Jare, or in Kastina. And in Kastina, we have Galma, which is ongoing. Then we have 27 egg dams, which are under the MDG. They have not been funded, so we have uh, and about 18 of them are in the north. Uh, we have. Uh, we have we have Barikiladi that's going on. We have Ukwito going on there. We have Rapin Soja. We have uh, Obese. We have uh, Ilesha, Ilefe. We have uh, Alajue. We have Kwa Falls. We have Adada. We have Vivo. We have Inishi that's almost finishing. Ibawa also there. We have. Um, so we have some, but uh, I can't get to the main Adamo, yeah, we have Jada. This is going on. That is in a. Then we have PQ in Taraba. We have the uh, Rafi soldiers in Taraba too. Oh, yeah. And the Buddha is completed. The Buddha is no more and I'm going down. And. Hello? Uh, what? Few others. We can't have. What's the agricultural potential of this town? How yeah. many, how much land do you want to be here? Oh, we want to irrigate about 2,000 acres. But uh, uh, I mean is sometimes when you have competing needs in a dam like this that require water for hydropower generation, water for general supply, domestic use, and irrigation, we try as much as possible to share. So if during the time we have a lot of rain and we can store this, well, we can irrigate as much as possible. But if the requirement of the people is more on power, then we need to allocate more water for the power so that we may maintain the maximum. But if the requirement is for water supply, which is the primary motive, then between completion of a dam and the completion of a the power station, because not necessary, two of them will go uh, hand in hand. Because Taking of the, the power station out, just the dam as it were. What percentage of work have you done? Uh, let's say uh, maybe 45. 45% uh, of the dam. Okay. Yes. I want to ask you. Um, I wanted to make a suggestion actually, which um, might be good to be considered by the Federal Executive Council concerning projects, you know, development of infrastructure, especially in the water resources area. Um, there are some of these dams, construction of dams are very sensitive issues and we engineers are very, very careful on how these things are done. So because of the possible disastrous you know, situation that could be created with the failure of a dam. Now what I'm suggesting is maybe we, the government can consider a situation where a lot of these large infrastructural projects that are done by multinational companies could be awarded in such a way that it, it is mandatory for them to partner with a local contractor on a percentage basis, say 70% international contractors, 30% local. And they come up with both their management, the management level, the engineers who are at the management level in the work, the finances and everything are done in that proportion so that it will, you know, it will accelerate transfer of technology from, from um, you know, uh, the, the, the contractors from who have had experience abroad to those who are here, so that uh, both our engineers will be employed at that level and directly participate in decision making in this project. So that at the end of the day, even the profit sharing will be in such a, a way that they too will be strengthened to be able to do similar jobs in the future. I think this are is a good I'm a deputy director on the ministry. Yeah, you know, the, it's the ministry that makes the policies. I expect that um, it's a good suggestion. Usually you send a memo to council. You discuss at the level with your directors, with your minister, because you are the professionals. We only meet on things that have been forwarded to us, mostly. If you have a concrete... Uh, because I, I know that SEC, for example, has so many dam projects. Uh, I'm sure that uh, they too would like to, to partner 
to exit some of their sites. Uh, that's why I was asking whether he will leave here by 2014. Uh, I believe this is something that uh, uh, you guys can consider and give us a uh, policy framework. Uh, if the president is it and it is useful, well, it's, it's done. Because eventually, what we're looking at is that Nigerians must take over the process of construction. No country is developed entirely by professionals, but other places we need their support. But we must look at an exit strategy depending on the seriousness of you, the professionals in the system. So sometimes you are more interested in partnering with the foreign people than our local people. That's an impression. That's an impression sir. Finally, gentlemen, let me thank you for this. This is a very strategic project by the federal government. Like I said, we are building so many dams in the country. I was just prompting him to say so, so that you will see the level of uh, uh, infrastructure investment that the federal government has embarked upon all over the country. There are three in Katina. About three dams or more in Katina alone, Katina State alone. Uh, we are doing the uh, Hadeja irrigation project in uh, Jigawa State, the Kashimbila Dam in uh, Taraba State, the Jeda Dam in uh, uh, Adamawa, then this Otubu Dam here. The Doma Dam, also some irrigation project, is going on there right now uh, in Asarawa State. So we have so many of these dams that are going on particularly in the northern part of the country, to promote agriculture, essentially, and also water supply uh, for domestic uh, consumption, for industry. So we are doing a lot of work, and some of these summaries will be given to you uh, by the Minister of Water Resources. The Otupo Dam is very strategic for us, three local governments, to get water from here. Uh, underground water is not possible here by bogos, so people have water seasonally, during the rainy, the, the dry season, they don't have water. So that's why this dam is so strategic uh, for this area. In addition to, you have had 2,000 uh, uh, hectares of land uh, to be irrigated from uh, this dam, uh, not to talk of the employment opportunities that this dam uh, will be providing uh, for the people of Benue State. Uh, I just urge you to work hard and ensure that we exceed by 2040. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.